Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a red truck with a Christmas tree in the back. It's going to be a winter scene, and I think I'm going to simplify it a little bit to make it a little bit more beginner friendly, show you step by step how to do it tonight from start to finish. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man in chat tonight, so if you've got questions while I'm painting, you can ask those and we'll try to answer. Let's get started. Alrighty, I'm using a 9 by 12 inch canvas today. This is the Fredericks Mixed Media Canvas Board. I've painted it with a coat of light orange, which is titanium white, pyrrole orange, and bismuth vandate yellow. So if you want to try to mix it up, but just any kind of warm light color I think will work. It doesn't have to be this exact one. Um, this one's got a little bit more yellow added, so maybe take a orange of and add a little yellow and white to it and you, you'll be good to go. But like I said, like even a yellow would be fine back here. I just wanted something warm underneath because we're gonna have a lot of blue and snow. Um, I like to have the warm color makes it kind of glow. Um, let's go over our colors. Got carbon black, burnt umber, burnt sienna, uh, cadmium yellow medium. Uh, this one is the pyrrole orange, but you could use cadmium orange instead. Um, cadmium red medium, quinacridone magenta, phthalo blue green shade. Nope, that's ultramarine blue. That one's phthalo blue green shade. Mm -hmm. And this one is phthalo green. I don't know why that looks like it's touching my water jar. I'm going to move my water back. A little bit so it's not there we go so you can see it okay and then this one is unbleached titanium and titanium white and some gloss glazing liquid down here if you don't have the gloss glazing liquid you can use matte medium or any kind of other um, acrylic medium that has an extender in it um, that'll just help us give us a little bit more blending time if we need it um, let me see here. Let me switch over to the regular palette. There we go. Thank you. Um, and then for our background, we're just going to want kind of a medium flat brush. I've got an 8 bright here. I'm going to use that for the background. Um, and then for our truck, you're going to want a more detailed brush. So I've got a couple sizes here, 6 bright and a 3 8 inch angle, and then a couple of round brushes. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to use exactly, but I'll mention them as I use them um, if I use them. Um, so let's start out with, uh, I've gone ahead and sketched it out pretty badly here, so <laughs> just kind of give myself a rest at rough estimate. I took this photo myself and I really, really badly photoshopped it. So, um, if you're like the back of the truck is showing in front of the tree, how's that possible? But, um, it's just cause, <laughs> it's just cause I badly photoshopped it. That's the only reason. Um, uh, so, and I don't know why I didn't take any photos from straight on the side. I think I was liking the grill in the front. So we're just going to kind of mm, make a mashup here. And, uh, but I want it kind of from the side. I just think it'll be easier, um, to do. It was definitely easier to draw that way. So, all right, I'm gonna grab some water here and I will have the tricycle for this available tomorrow um, on my Patreon page. If you don't wanna draw it, um, it will be available there and um, you can purchase it. It's $2 for a, uh, a month to access all of our tricycles um, or you can take a screenshot and, and from the end of the video and uh, trace it with tracing paper that way. There's, you don't have to. You know, you can you can get around it if, you, <laughs> if you're desperate enough. <laughs> Just don't trace on your monitor. Fine. I won't tell anybody. Just don't sell them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and get to paint in here. I'm going to grab, what did you say? Just don't what? Don't trace on your monitor. Right. Well, you can. The, the light coming through makes a really nice light box. Mm. Just as long as you're careful. Don't press yeah. too hard. Good All right. <laughs> I'm adding a little bit of burnt umber to my ultramarine blue. That just you could use black too, either one. It's just gonna tone it down a little bit, make it a little bit more um, neutral blue, not quite so bright. And then I'm gonna want a pretty good amount of white here, and I'm gonna leave that darker for my trees and things. And I'm gonna use this lighter color to start basing in our background here. And I'm going to kind of go around my 
truck a little bit on top of it. I just kind of wanted an idea of where I wanted to put it. But I'm going to let these kind of streaks show through here too and get a little bit of water and just go up and down with this, leaving just a little bit of that orange glow peeking through here and there maybe. Oops, I forgot to turn off my phone again this week. Maybe we got a picture of babies. No, no pictures of babies. Our, we've got the daily baby that our kids send us. Both of our older sons just had... Well, they didn't have them. Their partners had baby girls. <laughs> they were... <laughs> They were present. They were, yeah, partly responsible, but <laughs> uh, anyhow, we get we get pictures. We call it the daily baby baby mm -hmm. from the kids <laughs> sending us pictures of the cutie pie granddaughters that we just got, and occasionally the cats. <laughs> All right, so you can see how I'm doing here. It'll roughly if we do the kind of this vertical thing with this it'll kind of roughly resemble a sort of trees back here and I'm going to go ahead and paint all over the top of my Christmas tree I'm not going to want to try to paint around that and we'll figure it out as we go here where we want to put it in later it in later I mean so oh down there I think I have an eyelash or something right there here. Okay. Cute. You can see if I press down harder, some of that darker blue is coming off, but I don't mind that. It'll be okay. I'll just get a little bit more of my white and kind of go over it, streak it back over. If you want to do pine trees back here, you could do that. I don't know. I think I'm just going to put a few tree trunks and call it good. I don't, I'm not going to put a ton of detail back there. So while that's wet, while this is wet, let's go ahead and just streak in some, whoops, my brush fell out the side there. Streak in some tree trunks. Some more white here. I'm gonna try to fix this one here that I kind of miffed. And just soften those up. You can do this as many times as you want until you get kind of the look you want. Just kind of a soft, sort of vaguely blurry tree-ish background there. Maybe do some a little bit darker ones. Got a little bit of the darker blue here. So how you doing? You just took off running. I am doing good. Yeah. I've got a deadline tonight. I had to yeah. go fast. Mark's got Oak Island. Oak Island watch, so they're finding stuff already. Okay. First episode out of the gate, boom. Tunnel. Tunnel. That is, that was interesting, I have to say. So you get one interesting 10 minutes each season. That right. was it. Yeah, that was the one. That's That That was the one that gets you to watch the rest exactly. of the season. Exactly. And uh, we'll like sit there and watch some we'll just find nails and bottle buttons, caps. A bunch of buttons. <laughs> yeah. Every year we fall for this don't know when we're going to give up and just decide there's nothing there, but all right, so there we go. We've got kind of an interesting, got some glow going on back there and I can, I might do a little bit darker trees back there, but I don't, I don't want to spend a ton of time on that. 
Let's go ahead and get some of this darker color and I'm going to put it under my truck down here in the foreground and then we'll put some snow on top of it. Um, Again, this was just ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt umber with white, so nothing fancy. You can see I'm just kind of scrubbing it in side to side. This time I'm going for the horizon or for the for the ground, the horizontal surfaces. I'm going side to side, mm -hmm. vertical um, trees going up and down. This will kind of indicate our ground just by kind of going side to side like this with it. There we go. Nice blue background. And let's go ahead and get a little bit of this unbleached titanium, some white here. I'm going to get a little bit of glaze that'll just make it go on a little smoother. I'm just going to kind of lightly brush on some snowish parts here. Leaving the bottom under the truck just a little bit darker, maybe. Maybe it's in shadow. And I turn my canvas sideways that, like that because it makes it easier to get a, um, a straight line. Um, you'll find like however is most natural for you to do a straight line and for me it's kind of at an angle this way so if I angle my canvas in that direction then I can get a smoother line it's just I'm not having to fight my arm motion I can get a more uh, a straighter line easier doing it that, like that but However, it is, you know, easy for you. If you've got it on an easel, obviously, you may not be able to do that. Um, you can maybe step back, hold the brush a little bit farther back, and, and uh, get your straight lines that way. And they don't have to be perfectly straight. You can see it's kind of like a little snowdrift idea there. All right. And it may just kind of... Happen some snow back there on the horizon line. So, uh, is this the gnome's pickup truck? I think so. Okay. He's driving this. Yeah. And we'll we'll have to probably fix this around the tree here or the tires. Um, and if you want to make it look like he drove in and isn't stuck out here, you can leave some tire tracks back there or something. I don't know. I'm not too worried about that. But that looks pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and put just a few darker trees in. I'm going to get a little bit more of the brown this time. And then I'm going to get a little bit of the magenta. And that'll give our trees like a purpley tone. Burnt umber, ultramarine blue, kind of 50-50. And then just a touch of the magenta. And let's go ahead and get some. Yeah, this may be he cut the tree down after he was <laughs> out there with the birds. Yeah, he's bringing it home. He's bringing it home. Hey, real quick, what is your? Uh, uh, you, did you prepare the canvas with a uh, color? Uh, orange. Orange. Light orange. It's called. Light orange. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I had a cutie just before. Oh, that's very I coincidence. Know. I know. I was eating one and you were painting one. I was orange. painting one, yep. Wow. <laughs> the universe. <laughs> so, yeah. And I'm just going a little bit down farther than I think I need to. For these trees so that they uh, they for sure go below my truck you know um, 
Okay, that looks good. Let me get some white here. I'm seeing a little bit of white on the sides here, so I'm just going to throw some white on the thicker ones, like little birch trees. Making it a little bit wider there. Just want to make sure that your tree is like narrower at the top than it is at the bottom if you're going to be doing that. Okay, well, that looks good. Maybe do another little one here. All right, and then let's get some. I'm going to get my stippler and I'm going to get some of this color with a little bit of that blue from the background. Just kind of get a light blue and just do some very faint little foliage-ish type stuff. Might do a little bit darker around the dark trunks, but just a little hint of some foliage going on up here. Just high. I don't want it too low. Okay, looks good. Let's do some around this one. Get a little glaze. And then maybe kind of low like maybe there's some low bushes or something back here. Okay, looks good. Now it's given a little bit more perspective there. I like that better. Okay. <clears throat> and then if you want to, probably a good idea to just kind of put a, throw a few um, branches out to those trees, um, tree trunks. Now, again, this is very very much our like background uh, stuff so you don't have to do this if you don't want to it's totally up to you but maybe just a few very small branches kind of in the same general area as our this brush is a little bit too big I'm gonna get a little bit smaller brush here um, let's get the script liner number two. That'll give me a little bit more thinner lines. Okay. So when you're doing the liner brush, you just want to make sure you've got your paint very thin. Very, very thin. You thin it out and then go thinner still. It should be like milk consistency. Almost almost transparent but not quite if you've gone transparent you've gone a little too far so it's just shy of transparent and then you'll be able to do these lines without even pressing down that's that's what you want you want to just be able to barely barely skim the canvas and get these very thin lines okay I'm going to do some grasses in the snow here And then we're going to call that background good because I've got lots to do on this truck. Okay, looks good. All right, so I'm going to get, I think I'm going to get the six bright. The angle, having a, a flat brush will make it a little bit easier to get better sharp angles on this truck in that, you know, in some of these areas. So. I'm going to go ahead and try to keep this color wet in case I want to use it somewhere else. But how you doing, hun? I am doing well. Do we have a few people here tonight? We should say hi to them. Okay. Hi, people. Hi, everybody. <laughs> people of the internets. I always jump in there and just start painting without saying go, hi. Go, go, go. Yeah. Everybody's doing good. Yeah, I think everybody's doing well. Good. Survive. Snowstorms. Ooh. Floods. Hopefully they're staying warm and mm -hmm. it's it's in the summertime we're always like stay cool and then in the wintertime we're like stay <laughs> stay.
stay warm. All right. Maybe the only people that we don't have to say that to are the ones from Hawaii. Yeah. And then we're just like, do do it like normal, as it always is for <laughs> you. Lucky. <laughs> All right, so I think I'm going to just kind of use this light, this blue, or this red, what color is this? Red, to um, sketch out our truck. You could change the color um, if you want to. Uh, I don't think it angles down. If it does, it's, it's just slight. I think it goes pretty straight here, and then the back of the truck is lower than the top, uh, the, the hood. So I'm just going to kind of sketch this out slightly. This will be transparent, obviously. I'm not trying to do anything too drastic right now. I'm going to bring it out to about right there, I think. And maybe lower it down just a little bit more at the very tip there. There we go. All right, so that's your first kind of angle there. And then we'll have some grill coming out that is probably not showing this much in the front, but we're gonna do it anyways. And then we've got this this bumper. that comes down here and let's see so we're gonna have a chrome grill I'm gonna use this purple it's kind of our dark color and it's gonna come in from the wheel a little bit so we're like right in here somewhere like that and then we've got this dark wheel base here. So this fender shape is, I got it a little bit wrong. It's its more like straight down and tucked up over the wheel like that. And it ends right about where this ends here. So we're gonna have like a kind of a line here you can do. And we'll have the highlight or shadow right here on it and then about mm, a little bit more than halfway up so somewhere in here I'm gonna have this light and it does angle down so it angles down this way and meets up just before that line right there and this should be a little bit wider than this part. So I need to move my wheelbase forward a little bit, I think. So this needs to be a little bit wider here. And our wheel will go kind of in here. Yeah. I'm just kind of redrawing it with paint here. So all I'm doing just getting my angles right. Yeah, that looks about right. Something in there. And then there's going to be a running board that goes across here. I'll go ahead and do that with the purple because it's going to be kind of chrome, I think. Come on. And I'm going to need some snow back in here. I didn't make my wheelbase big enough. Well, I might just, let me see. We'll see, we might not need to. Wheel and round a little bit of white here for the center of that, okay. And literally, this is gonna look worse before it looks better, sorry. I mean, like, this doesn't look like anything like a red truck. Well, we'll get it there. We'll get it there. We're going to have an angled windshield. 
And then the top of the truck, it's pretty low cab. It's not very tall. Coming back and curving round and then come straight down this side. And then this is comes out a little bit and that's where the door is right there. So there's our door. And then sort of this line from the side of the truck kind of continues right here, kind of curve, curved line there. And then we've got our winch or our, our window. I might I'll put a little bit of the windshield right here showing. Maybe get a little bit of this blue. Use that for that. And then this darker blue for the inside of the cab. Okay, so there we go. That looks pretty good, I think. Again, I think I need to move my wheel forward. I still have it a little bit too far back, I think. Or we can push the... Yeah, we we'll probably need to move it forward a little bit. Oh well, we'll keep we'll keep drawing here and see what we think after we get it all drawn in. All right, and then our truck. The bottom of it is just above this line here, so right in here, somewhere is where our bottom of the truck is going to be. And then it's going to kind of have a little tail thing here. And the wheel well is going to be on a level with that one in the front. So right in here, come down almost to the level of this. There we go. Nice and rounded. And then we've got our wheel well. I don't know why I didn't do my snow more around the tires there. I kind of left a lot of snow around the tire area. And I'm probably going to need to move that one. So let's go and get that black. And I'm going to fix my tires right now. So they are... Pretty much, like if I split this hood, the center is pretty much right there. So we are close, but we're just maybe um, like almost a quarter in, or like the brush width uh, away. So we just need to move it over here just a little bit. That'll be a better spot for our wheel right here. Okay. And that may be too big of a wheel, but we get, you get the idea. So there we go. And it's actually a little high. Because we've got this wheel well that comes around it. Let's go ahead and get some white. And we'll gonna put that in. Let's go ahead and use that white to kind of highlight the top of the wheel. So it'll be kind of somewhere in here. So make that center a little bit smaller. There we go. All right, so we got that. We'll just need to put add some blue around our wheels there. We kind of lost our... That was that snow color, the ultramarine blue and the burnt umber with the white. Let's go and put it around this one too. I think we're going to need to fix that one too. And we'll go ahead and put some tire tracks there, like, this brush is not probably the best one for this, 
And it's doing this because that background is dry. You see how it's kind of breaking up? But we can, we'll put some white over the top of that to blend it in. If our white was a little bit more wet, like it was when we first put that blue on there, it, um, it would smooth out a little bit better for us. So I'm just going to get a little bit of white here in my glazing medium and just kind of go back over some of that and blend it out a little bit. Now, now that blue will kind of blend in a little bit more. Get some of that darker blue now again and especially like right where those tires have come in, maybe kind of do some streaks. Okay, that looks good. Getting some, how are we doing on time? Oh, we're doing great. Doing good. I think we can do it. <laughs> Mark's giving me a two hour time limit on Tuesday nights, so I gotta book it there. just let him out and he's scratching to get back in. Okay. So I want to make these of a level, kind of that line, that line, and that line. So we just need to make sure that they're kind of, those lines should be parallel. So I need to make this, bring this whale down a little bit. with Spencer and with us at the same time. But he doesn't want you to lock him out of the studio in case he wants to come back in. Mm -hmm. Okay, getting some light, some white. I just got some light gray here. Kind of put it over some of the tires. I'm not worried about this bottom line because we're going to put snow up over it. So if you're like, that doesn't look straight, it's fine. It's going to be fixed later. We're just kind of trying to get them sort of generally the same size. That's all. And if you want to, you could use like a top of a bottle or something circular to make a stencil and do them that way. It'd be probably easier than trying to eyeball it like I'm doing. The tires on this truck were flat, so you can see in the picture there. <laughs> they were, that's all there was of them. <laughs> that's what's in this picture that I took. So I'm trying to also figure out what they would look like with <laughs> not being flat. <laughs> I don't want to give our tire truck flat tires. Okay, I'm going to round this out right here. those a little bit more. I've got to let that dry because there's a lot of water on the, in them right now. I'm going to get the phthalo blue and some white. This is a little bit more of a teal leaning blue. And I noticed the interior of our truck was kind of that lighter blue so I'm going to go ahead and do that color. Maybe get a little bit of that original dark purple from our trees and add that in kind of just have like a mixture of these two streaking. I'm not going to do a ton of detail on the interior of the car. Just want a little bit of color on the windows and we'll probably streak some white over it to make it look like there's some light shining um, reflections or something. So 
So it's thalo blue with a little bit of white, and then I've just used some of that purple with the um, this was purple and ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and magenta that made this color right here. Um, so I'm just going to use that to kind of tap in some slight details, nothing really major, just kind of some little maybe interior. Maybe we can see through to the other window on the other side so there's like a dark ring around it and there's some seat here or something down low. Okay, and then let's, we've already kind of got this color on the windshield, so I'm just going to kind of put it on again, make sure I've got a good, good coverage for it, get a little bit of that thalo blue, and we do some of that on top. Looks good. Okay, and then while that's wet, I'm going to get some blue or some white and just kind of brush it through, flatten out my brush a little bit. I've got the, I didn't say one round here, and um, I'm going to, I need to move these ones that I'm not using yet over so I know which ones I've used. I'm going to use that and dry brush kind of over the top. This is, it. this is still wet, so it'll kind of blend with it a little bit, but very lightly, just kind of dry dry brush a little bit of streaking on the window there. So today to just, you know, do a little fun thing with the people in your Thankful Art Facebook right. group, I... Uh, I post a little poll on on Facebook on Facebook and right. Facebook group regarding you know have people guess which wallpaper you you have on I your have computer on my computer mm -hmm. and there were four guesses one was the uh, the light shining down in the forest on the Christmas tree right which uh, is a good guess which, which is thirty two percent right uh, we had the beach hammock which was fourteen percent. Mm -hmm. We had birds on a limb. They got 6%. Mm -hmm. And then the white candles with the uh, ornaments uh, on there, 46%. So would you like to reveal which one is actually on your desktop? Yeah, because I came in and I was like, oh, that's interesting, honey. What are you doing? And he's like, yeah, I'm doing a poll just to kind of, you know, for what fun. he already said, yeah. just for fun. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. So then I looked at the ones that he had listed, and none of them, none of them <laughs> are my screensaver. And I was I like, no, no, they're right, there's birds. Oh, they're different birds. Yeah, it's not the birds. <laughs> it's not at all. None of them were the one. So there was I'm one. I'm using light gray here, by the way. There was one pretty close, and that had the least votes. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Because I'd never changed my screensavers. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm lazy and I leave it up all year, just about. I find one. It's the long. It the 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 thing that I found with my screensavers is that they they have to be long, because it bothers me if I have dark dark oh, edges yeah, have or if it's cut off weird. Right. So I have to have the long long paintings. I don't do that many of them, so there weren't that many to choose from. So you have a peek into what Angela has to deal with all the time that. I got close. Attention to detail is not Mark's de Mark's <laughs> skill. There's it's birds. Not. They're sitting on something. There's more than one. This is the video. Done. No, it's not. It's not his uh, forte. No. no. Yeah. That's going to be a problem when you come to work with me full time. But I, we'll, that's for a problem for another day right now. <laughs> so thanks for everybody who... Participate in the poll, and next time I'll try to put the right answer. Try in to there. actually have a right answer, a yeah. right answer in yeah, the uh, yeah. Try to get offer. a right answer. So. Okay, good idea. It I wasn't intentionally a trick question. No, it sure. was not. I wish I could say that. Three eighths inch Willow's blender here. It's not true. And my thalo blue. So I'm making a dark teal, and then I'm going to add burnt umber, a little bit of burnt sienna, just to kind of warm it up a little bit. 
Mert Sienna is a good color to use with Thalo Blue. It makes a beautiful teal. So I'm just wanting a nice dark green for the base for my Christmas tree here. And I'm wanting it to be shooting out kind of in this general direction. So I'm just going to kind of start with the shape sort of. And I'm doing this before I do my red because I, I figured the truck because I don't want to have to paint around this. So this will just kind of give me a base in here. And I want the center to be kind of coming down the middle here. So I need to watch and make sure that these two shapes are, you know, kind of making an A-frame shape. Um, if you're drawing it, you know, kind of keep an eye on your center of the tree. So that looks about right. Oh, he's so cute. I love it. I love it. I know this has been around a while, the 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 red trees, but I keep seeing them, and I'm like, I just want to paint another one. I don't know. Why not? Nobody said I couldn't. <clears throat> and I put it up for vote, and my group liked it, so blame my patrons. They, they always... They always uh, steer me right, though. <laughs> I like it. So I was excited when they said they want to paint this. I didn't give them the cho choice of the, of the um, gnome, I don't think. I don't think I had drawn it yet. Or maybe I had. Uh, no, I don't think I had. It was kind of a last-minute addition to my schedule this month, and I hope you guys enjoyed that last week. That was super fun. I enjoyed it way more than I thought I would. I was not a big gnome fan, but I was, I'm seeing him everywhere, and so I like to, you know, paint it if it's a trend most of the time. And um, I'm just feathering this out, by the way, just kind of using this 3 8 inch blender and just kind of pulling it out along these edges so that I'm getting kind of feathery edges. I'm going to get my white here um, and a little bit of yellow. So yeah, I wasn't a big like gnome fan. I don't have any gnomes in my house, but I really enjoyed it <laughs> way more than I thought I would. <laughs> All right. And so I'm going to go over this and do like maybe, you know, maybe half of the of the space add some of this lighter green here and kind of also keep it in the same thing all these branches are going to come down to this center you know how a tree works you know christmas tree so you're you're going to be pulling from the outside in and then these ones that are coming straight at us you know you've got this branch that's fanning out like this but when it faces you you're seeing a line instead of this shape. So when we get to this middle part, we can just do some little lines, right? For those parts. And then as we get out from there, we can kind of do longer, longer branches. And this is still wet, what I just put on there, this dark green. So um, if it blends too much, you can go back in and Add some of that back in. Kind of maybe put a little too much of that in the middle, but there you go. We got a nice fuzzy tree. And then we can add more white to it if we want to. If we want to make it look snowy or whatever. Our tree in the picture has some ornaments and stuff on it. So I'll probably put a few ornaments. Maybe not as many as in the picture, but I do want a little bit of snow, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of white. And I've mixed it a little bit with what was already on the brush. And maybe think about that, you know, the ones that are sort of towards the top might get a little bit more snow or something. So we'll give them a little bit more tension with, this, with the snow. All right, that looks good. And make sure you're leaving plenty of that dark, though. If you add too much of your light color, it's just going to wash it out, and you're just going to end up with a white, you know, light light green tree instead of having this nice dark interior here where all the center of the tree grows. Okay. Looks good. All right, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna go ahead and use this brush because it actually does a really good job of blending. 
So, and I'm just going to go ahead and use the cadmium red medium and a little bit of the quinacridone magenta. The magenta makes takes that cadmium red and just bumps it up to a really nice bright color. I just like it um, a little bit more. It's a more intense color. So I'm just going to kind of go inside my lines that I've already kind of made here. And I'm putting it on fairly thick. And that way I can go in here and mess with it here. I'm going to fill in this whole shape here. Maybe even just do this part. Just kind of, you know, gauge it however fast you are at painting this in. If you're a little bit slower, you can do just this top section and then do the rest. But I'm going to try to get part of this fender in here too before the top part dries all the way. And if you have an area like this going over this black here where it's not covering very well, um, you may just end up having to add a little bit of white to your black. That's okay. Not a big deal. It happens. I may have to do it right in here. We'll see. Doesn't seem like it wants to cover up my area here that has, you know, close to my black. And actually that shape is not quite right anyway, so because it's kind of curving away from the curving away from that black. So, all right, so then I'm going to grab my orange. I haven't cleaned out my brush. And I'm going to come in here and kind of lay in some of that. Maybe a little bit of the white. I may have to let this dry because I don't think it's got enough underneath to do this yet. I made it, yeah because it's kind of peeking through. Yeah. Here we go. Just putting that on the top of that line there. You can see where it's kind of streaking that it needs a second coat. So I'm just going to, I'm going to not try to do this in one coat. I'm just going to go ahead and put on it, the rest of the truck and then I'll come back and add my highlights in. I'll give it a second coat and then add the highlights the second time around. So this time I'm just going to basically fill in all my red here. And you can see I'm still kind of seeing through in some places. So if you need to, you can add a little bit of white to make your paint more opaque. This red is, because it's got so much of the, cadmium Cadmium red is sort of an opaque color. Um, it is kind of an opaque red, but it's still not as opaque as we might need here. So I've got some tree trunks peeking through from before. So I'm going to get some white. White is their miracle cover-up. It'll cover anything very easily. So just grab it, add it a little bit to your red. And paint that over. And then when we do our next coat of red, it'll be completely saturated and nice and bright for us. No problem. And you don't want to um, you don't want to mess with your layers too much while they're drying. So that's why I was saying, you know, if you wanted to do the streaks through your paint, 
you kind of need to do it. I'm I'm adding white to this area here because it it just wasn't covering. I still see some trees through it. Um, need to do. You'll be able to tell when your paint gets too is is trying to dry on you because what will happen is especially if I add a little bit of water here let me show you what happens so I have a little bit of thick paint here that's trying to dry and I'm going to add a little bit of thinner wet paint to it and let's just do it over here you see what it does it just washes it right off the canvas. So that red was trying to dry, and the more I mess with it, the, the more I'm taking off of it. If I put a little bit thicker paint on, it can stick. So that's kind of the trick to getting it to stick if you've got an area that's doing that. But probably, really the best thing to do is just to let this whole thing dry and then do a second coat later. Don't mess with it. So um, you, may, you may just... Watch out for that. If you're new to acrylics, that's something that is really important to know because that it can be really frustrating when you're trying to lay down paint and it lifts um, the paint that's already there and you're like, what am I doing wrong? Why is it doing this? It feels like acrylics are fighting you instead of, you know, doing what you're asking it to do. And that's why they just don't like to be messed with when they're drying kind of like teenagers kind of like me when I'm trying to sleep and the dog's barking because your husband let him out and was playing video games and yeah and and barking right I was I wasn't bothered at all actually he didn't bother you at all no? yeah thanks for waking up and going and getting him right appreciate that I haven't, I mean, I don't nap that often anymore. I used to nap all the time when the kids were little because I, I needed it. <laughs> but I kind of usually get, you know, decent sleep and then don't nap. But I, I really wanted to nap the other day. And I mean, that dog must have woke me up six times in a half an hour. And I was like, that's it. I'm done. I'm not even going to try. It's over. And Mark's just in there playing video games. With my headphones on. With his headphones on, not not even paying attention. He just left the dog outside the whole time. Yeah, I, I totally forgot that he had gone outside. That's all on me. So if you want to go ahead and go to sleep right now, I'll go finish nap. Up. Go yeah, nap. I'll, You'll finish the video I'll for finish me. Up for Thanks. You. I'm okay. I'm okay. Or later on tonight, if you want to go ahead and finish up that nap, I'll make sure he's quiet for you. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> oh, goodness. Our truck is cute. He's cute. I like him. All right. I feel like I need to fix the shape of the cab a little bit. It's going to come out a little bit more right here behind the door. Because there's a gas cap there that I didn't notice before. And we need to just let that dry. So let's go and work on our wheels while we're letting that dry. And we'll work on our, our uh, wheel well, because this wheel well here needs help here. forward and then our cab's gonna come down here and this is our running board here I'm just gonna bring it down just a little bit up with that a little bit more I 
And then I didn't give him a bumper over here, so I need to give him a bumper. The bumper is up high, though. It's up here. It's kind of a... It's sticking out. And then there's a light that's sticking out here, too. Okay, let's get my white. And now, now's where I need to be a little bit more careful about it. just going to put kind of some little, I'm not going to put all the lug nuts and stuff. I think there's probably a cap here that's missing on the truck. So I'm going to put a cap on these somewhere in here. use some of this white and I'm just going to kind of highlight across this running board to give it some highlights and I'm just skipping it along so it's kind of look maybe shiny a little bit give this a little little shine some blue some of that the chrome will match the color around it so if we get that ultramarine blue that's in our snow we can add that to the chrome some to our let's say these are metal okay I feel like that bumper needs to come out a little bit more I think it does it's pretty far out in the picture it's going to bring it out a little bit more around the front of it. There we go. There we go. Okay. I'm just going to use some of this black mixed with a little bit of red to kind of mark out my shape of my wheel well here and it's going to have a little crease right here and then come down from there come like that very faint line coming down from the there and then my curve from my wheel well and 
I'm gonna bring my running board forward a little bit here. Didn't make it big enough. hood's a little bit big, but that's okay. I like big hoods. I can't. <laughs> cannot let it. It's all right. This is our interpretation. I posted a video of Kara Morgan's got this. She's a comedian that is really hilarious. You check her out on Instagram. She and TikTok, but she uh, did a watercolor skit where she plays the perfectionist and her child like self or no no it's herself and and her perfectionist side as the characters and um side by side doing watercolor and uh, it's pretty pretty hilarious (laughs) (laughs) but you know at one point she's like well I think it's just the interpretation this just made me think of it it's just the interpretation of it mm-hmm. and the perfectionist like well are we how <laughs> let's just pretend this never happened <laughs> all right getting a little bit of black and going around my light here you can be as fancy with this as you want uh, use a little bit of little bit of that same colors that I've been using a little bit of the white and gray to do the light the shine on the light there and then I'm going to get some black here to use on the grill one two three four five one now this is one two three four again five so one more up here there so I'll draw those out a little bit more carefully but that'll give us a starting point so yeah that's looking pretty pretty close pretty pretty close um let's go ahead and kind of do our curved line there a little bit of darker right there and then there's a so that line goes up to here and then there's a line in front for the hood that comes down, curves down to here. Yeah, I definitely made the hood way too big. (laughs) That's all right. Oh, just bring the wheel well up maybe to meet it a little bit there. Okay. And then right here and then there's a long line along the back here and what this will do is just kind of give us a head start on our on our finishing touches on our truck here because we'll have this kind of darker areas already mapped out sort of for us so it makes putting in the highlights a little bit easier and there's a little bit of dark around my windows, so make sure you kind of do that. Darken up just a little bit with the... And there's kind of a line where the door... Whoops, what did I do there? I looked up. My brush touched down. So it meets up right there. And there's kind of a line that comes down here. Okay, and then there's the gas cap. Just gonna get some black. It's kind of right where the tree is, right at that corner there. And then the handle's right here for the door. So is the gas cap on the door? It looks like it is. Or no, I think there's a seam for the door right here that we're not seeing. I think yeah, there's no, a little it's bit on of the seam. 
It's on the pillar right behind the door. Right. Okay. And I think that it's, it's not flush with the side. It's on right. the tube. Yeah, it's like sticking out a little bit. Okay. Looks good. All right, let me grab... I think I'm going to get... This brush, this is a two round, but it's the Aspen, so it's a little bit more stiff bristled. Um, the one that we've been using would work, the uh, the one round. I'm just, this is bugging me. It's starting to peel, and I am i can't stand the feeling of it, so I'm switching brushes. <laughs> I could tape it, but I'm not going to stop to do that right now. I'm just going to switch brushes. <laughs> it's a little bit creeping me out. <laughs> Sorry. Get some white here, just on the tip of the brush, kind of a light coat of it, not too much, and I'm going to use it to carefully highlight. got the color kind of on here so what I'm doing is just adding these like little final touches highlights sticking out right there but I'm not going to do that yet so I'm going to go ahead and highlight the gas cap very lightly what time is it? 7 oh we're doing good we're doing good alright I'm going to switch brushes yet again this is driving me crazy okay Let's go ahead and get the filbert and see if that helps the two filbert. So basically I just want kind of a stiff bristled brush that's gonna hold its shape. This one, that one was had a weird hair sticking out. And the one before was crumbling. So, so it was leaving bits in my water here. See, so you can see the green paint in my water from the brush. I'm glad that your standards for husbands are lower than your brushes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I have. Well, no disagreement there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know what you were saying. <laughs> Harder on my brushes than I am on you. That's that's what I meant to. Yeah, your imply. your stands are a little higher for your brushes than your husband's. I'm. You're not treading them in because there's a odd hair sticking exactly. out. Exactly. Right. Something's peeling off there. <laughs> or it doesn't belong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Check. Right. So I'm going through here and adding a little bit of this pyrrole orange. Get some cadmium red light. I added a little bit of cadmium red medium. I mean, to it, to the pyrrole orange too. I'm gonna to get some of the cadmium red medium now, and go next to it and blend that in. 
I'm doing the brighter orange kind of in the middle part here where I'm seeing some of the kind of orangey highlights. And I don't really want these dark lines to be as, you know, obvious, so I'm kind of going over them a little bit too to soften them up. I don't want the truck to look like a cartoon when it's outlined or anything. Just kind of mostly doing that to give myself the areas to work on. Okay, so that's good. Then let's go ahead and get some magenta and add that. So now I'm going to use that along that line there. Blend that in. And it should blend in what, with what I've already put down. So I should get a by the end I should get kind of a nice smooth blend between those three colors. See that? Okay. Let me use this darker color around my window. falling back away. Darker line right here. And right here. And I'm, you know, I'm going into a little bit more detail than you might see in some of the other red truck videos that I've seen out there. I'm trying to kind of give you a little bit more of a realistic, you know, um, version that's still doable so getting a little bit of that darker red that had the black in it here and just blending it along that line on either side of it to kind of smudge out that line and add a little bit more shadowing I'm gonna use it kind of back here and kind of at the bottom of my Fenders here, wheel wells, and then a little bit up under there. And just by kind of blending it out a little bit, it makes it a little those, those dark lines a little bit softer. That's all I'm doing. Just kind of trying to take that outline out of them, and now I still want to see those lines, but I don't I don't want them to be so obvious. Okay, there we go. Looks good. Then let's get a little bit more of the bright red, maybe some cadmium red medium, and I'm going to put it in right here. My grill kind of come up out side my lines to do those lines there so they have some dimension. where you can clean up any any streaks or things that you don't like if you need a second coat anywhere. In the main body of your truck. And then let's get some white. I get a little bit of glaze. Glaze will just make it a little bit more transparent and flow a little bit easier. And I like that color. If it's too pink, you can add a little bit of the orange or a little bit more yellow, but we'll try this and see what we do, what what it looks like. I'm going to streak it right here. Not quite up to that dark line. And then we'll put it on the top of the trunk coming down a little bit in the front. Okay. Now I'm going to 
to get a little bit of the brighter red and just kind of come up underneath it, around it. Kind of blend it in a little bit. See that? Just soften it up a little bit. And now I'm going to come back in with that bright color and add it where I want it the brightest. This brush being a little bit more stiff bristled will give me a little bit more blending um, capability. It's a little bit stiffer and it will push the paint around a little bit for me. Okay, there we go. And then a little bit right here. Not quite up to the window sill. And again, take that darker red and just kind of come up underneath it. Blend that out. If you want to. Blend a little bit right there. See that? Getting that brighter color. Put a little bit right here on this. Always, I'm not quite going up all the way to the edge, and then I can just take that brush after I put that wet paint down and just smudge it out a little bit, push it around. Okay, and then let's go ahead and just kind of put some streaks of highlights in there. You could put uh, words on the side of the truck if you wanted to, you know, you could put like truck farm, tree farm or something or whatever. If you look really carefully, there's a reflection of me right here in the photo. <laughs> Taking the photo. Just a couple of places. Maybe a little bit right here. What? What am I doing? No, I'm just looking for your reflection. Sorry. Looking for my reflections. Do you see me? I do. <laughs> here. So about the same level here, I want to kind of put a little reflection in the red, and I think that'll that'll kind of indicate the ground, sort of. And I'm doing those sort of vertically. just trying to make it look a little shiny, you know? And again, you can leave any of this out that stresses you out. So you do you on this. Don't, don't, um, you know, if the reflections make you, you know, make it harder for you, don't do them. Just do, just do it solid red and even would be fine. So I think that this is adaptable to whatever level you're at right now. And I don't want you to get, you know, get halfway in this and feel frustrated because you can't do it. I want you to enjoy this. So I know learning to paint can be a little bit frustrating. It doesn't always go the way we hope, but if you think about it like any other skill, like, you know, if you were learning, you know, well, like me, and for instance, learning to ski, I took, you know, 
an hour and a half to go down the bunny trail and called it quits. So, <laughs> and there were a lot more experienced skiers going on blazing trails all the way around me and zipping around and making it look really easy. It was very frustrating and not all that enjoyable. So I'm just you saying, good teacher. Mark's not a good teacher. Mark ditched me with his sister to go play. Because I was taking too long. I think he just thought I was going to show up and, you know, figure it out in the first five minutes and we'd go run, you know. I don't know. I'm not really sure what he thought bringing me along, but. <laughs> it's easy. First time skier. I was a desert girl. I didn't grow up skiing. We were lucky. You even saw snow. <laughs> we went. We had to go up to the mountains to go see snow about once a year for about a half an hour and then we come back down so <laughs> that's about all I had <laughs> for experience before I got some skis strapped to my feet but again so you know there there again you know you you may not have grown up doing art you may not have any art experience but you know if you want to learn you can it's just like i could have learned to ski if i had kept trying but i decided to give up and you know i hope you won't decide to give up with painting but you know it's all in whatever effort you're willing to put into it and your first effort is probably not going to be your best you know if you're you're not going to be painting the way that i paint because i've been painting for you know over 30 years now it's just that's you know it doesn't mean that you're bad at art if you don't paint the way that I do or somebody else who has been painting for a while does, it just means that you're new at it and you just have to practice some more and you can get there. Um, but you're going to have to give yourself uh, that permission to be um, a little bit, you know, a, a beginner, a novice at it and don't have such high expectations on yourself that you have to get it just perfectly on the first try. Um and I think you'll have a little bit better time of it if you kind of go into it with that no notion of, okay, this may not go great. And then maybe if it does really well, then you'll be surprised and, you know, but if you kind of go in thinking that you're going to you're going to um, create a masterpiece on the first go and, you know, I don't know anybody who who started out as a you know perfect artist it just you know unless you're a child prodigy or something and maybe you are but anyhow you get the idea so just give yourself permission to enjoy the process as much as you can don't worry about how, what it looks like too much just have fun with it and I, hopefully I promise if you kind of follow along we'll at least make it easier to avoid some of the pitfalls that you might see like the paint lifting and things like that that's the whole goal of these videos it's the whole reason I started doing them because I kept hearing people saying I can't paint it's like no you can you can you just have to know how and I had such a hard time in college they didn't teach me uh, techniques they just taught you theory and stuff and so I wanted to learn the techniques and I had such a hard time painting with acrylics I didn't know what I was doing wrong because I was trying to do Bob Ross type stuff I'm just going to add one more highlight up here and you know painting with the oils is totally different from painting with acrylics you can get the same results you just have to know the techniques and they're different and um, so anyhow I didn't know that and so I'm hoping to that this, these videos will help you to have a little bit more confidence, have a little bit more early success than I did. <laughs> That's it. That's all. That was a long story to just say that little bit there at the end. All right, getting some magenta and cadmium red medium here. I'm going to do a little bit kind of darker leading up to that highlight. Okay, I think I'm really happy with that. It looks 
very shiny and rounded. I think I think we got it pretty close. The tires look all right. They look fairly symmetrical. You know, don't don't use a ruler on them. They may not be exactly the same size, but we're close enough. I'm, I'm happy with for, it. For, huh? for, pretty impressive for freehanding it. Exactly. That's that's what we're gonna go with. That's awesome. <laughs> no, it is. It really is. Yeah. It's, you made it look easier than it really is. Well, thanks, honey. All right, I'm gonna get some blue. I got, I have a little bit of blue there, so I'm gonna go with it. A little bit of blue. Um, doesn't really matter which one. I don't think. Maybe a little bit of the the um, ultramarine. I think that's what that was. And a little bit of the unbleached titanium, just to give it a little bit of warmth. And I'm gonna tap on over the tires so that it, it's got some texture so we're getting a little snow and this is the deerfoot stippler 3 8 inch so it's gonna you could i could have used this brush too the the blender either one and just kind of tapping the tip tip down really any brush that gives you any texture so even a, a gesso brush or one of those um yeah, just a brush, uh, deer, uh, not deer, but, um, hog bristle brush. Sorry, I'm having, I'm in our brain right now. I'm having trouble talking. It happens. Um, so put the paint down and then kind of just smudge it a little bit. And then I'm just kind of using it to draw it side to side here, just to give me some little bit brighter highlights in my snow. And putting some back in here too. Got some tracks there happening. I like it. And then getting the bright, bright white. And we'll just put some right on top, just some, just a few. These are gonna be real bright, so we don't need to overdo it. There we go. I like it. All right. If you want to, you could stipple a little snow on my truck. I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm just going to kind of lightly um, uh, splatter at the very end. Um, and then let's go ahead and do a little bit on our star, on our tree, and we'll be good. Oh, shoot. I'm back to that brush. No, I need to get another brush. I can't. I can't do it. I can't even. Okay, so there's a one that isn't split. Same brush, one round. There we go. Um, gonna get my yellow and some white. Though yellow needs to have white in it because it's too transparent to go on. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of burnt sienna to warm it up. So it's more of a gold. Uh, you can totally leave the star. I honestly don't know if I want the star on my tree. I did a star for the last video, so let's say well, I'm going to leave it off for now and just see what I think because I don't know if I want to add the star. I kind of almost like it as is. What do you th no, I, I, I'll go ahead and put what? Sorry, I started to ask you a question and didn't let you answer. <laughs> what were we going to say? I don't think it needs a star. Mm -mm. Okay. I'm going to put these on and I'm going to try to leave a little bit of that green showing through just so that it's got a little reflection already. Okay. And get a little bit of that green from the tree. Because the shiny ornaments will pick up the colors around them so that tree color will be in these let's get a little red cadmium red in the magenta and these are a little smaller again needs a little white I'm not going to cover that dark green without it And 
I'm trying to tuck it into kind of the branches a little bit. I'll probably have to go back over with a little bit of green to, you know, go over the top of some of these with a little color. Some really small and some bigger. Trying to keep them random too, where they're placed so they're not in too much of a pattern. That's cute. And then there's a light green, so let's go ahead and add just some unbleached titanium to the phthalo green. There's some silvery ones. So use some white to do those. And a little bit of the black, make them kind of gray. See how I'm leaving a little bit of that green peeking. I probably need the star now that I've done all these. colors getting some more of this yellow but add a little bit more of the darker I'm gonna add some dark shadows to my yellow and I'm just using the idea that the sunlight's coming from above so I'm shadowing this bottom edge of them Let's go ahead and use some of this color to dab in some of the on top of some of these white dots that we did. Okay. Getting the brighter red with the magenta. I'm gonna do the same thing there. Just go ahead and dab in some darker red. Bottom of these, leaving the kind of top half lighter. Get 
get some depth. I might even go a little bit darker with those. Yeah, that's better. Using a little bit of black with it there. straight. It's already pretty dark. So I'm just going to use that to darken up the blue ornaments. And use a little bit of the black with my white make a dark silver shadow the bottom half of these and I'm dabbing it on because when you've got um, even with the round object when you've got these tree trunk tree trunks and you know tree branches and things they're gonna create these um, reflections that are not smooth so I'm not doing like smooth reflections I'm kind of doing a semicircle with these but I'm not putting them on like perfectly smooth I'm, I'm gonna get some black and just really go really dark on the bottom of some of these just at the base they really kind of integrate down into the tree a little bit that looks good Get a little bit of this to do on these lights too. A little bit gray. Okay. And then I've got the dark green. I'll just go ahead and use some of that tree color with my phthalo green. time consuming but it's not necessarily that hard it just takes a little time to do the, each one all right and then I'm going to get my white I still have a little bit of green in here but that doesn't really bother me and I'm going to use that to highlight my ornaments Each one should get a little dab of the white at the top, and it doesn't have to be perfectly round or in the same spot every time, but some of the smaller ones you'll want to do little teeny tiny dots, and the bigger ones you want to do more of a swipe across. Picking up some blue there, doing them on the blue ones there, so... a little bit brighter so I'm just going to grab some yellow and use that to brighten up a little bit on these. Maybe add a little bit of the orangey color to them. some of them. So I think I'm just going to use it on some of these smaller ones here just to kind of tie in the color of the truck a little bit. 
Okay, that's good. And maybe some teal. Let's get a little bit of the thalo blue, thalo green. How are we doing on time? Good. We're good. Yeah, let's do a little bit of teal. And I'm just going to dab that on. it kind of over the green ones but I don't know if I want to do that I think I want to do some in addition to the green so I kind of took my green ones out I need to put them back in Let's go ahead and put a star in. I feel like I need it. Mark sighing over there. I just heard you sigh. I heard that. It's like I'm never going to get to watch Oak Island on time. Just give it a little bit of dimension. out of it um, from the center out in each little section of them you know from the center out right here will be a little bit different color so we can do like a little bit of a darker color right there and maybe right there maybe here that makes sense maybe that bark bottom section of each one of these is a little bit darker. On that orange, what brand of paint is the orange? It was golden. golden? It's called Pyrrole Orange. Pyrrole Orange. Mm -hmm. I, did I get paint on my shirt? I don't think so. Okay. Um, get a little bit of white with my yellow here. get some clean white. I'm just gonna kind of hit the high points of that star. Okay, here we go. Cute. 
cute. some light green here. I kind of lost my light green highlights because I was messing with the colors. Okay, there we go. All right, and then I want to add just a few more branches back in of this dark green. So I'm going to get some of that phthalo green and, and uh, phthalo green light and or phthalo green yellow shade, thalo blue green shade, and some burnt sienna, burnt umber to make that dark green from my tree trunk. And I'm going to add a little bit of white. There we go. So the white's just going to make it more opaque. I'm just going to go ahead and use this brush and I'm going to brush through just some very small not uh, not on all of these, but I just want some little branches coming up on a few so that they look like they're part of the tree. And then I'm going to get some white because I'm not seeing that very much. Get some white. And carefully kind of, yeah, there we go. Just kind of find some spots where we can add a little bit of the tree back in. Yeah. Just barely touching to create some movement. And splitting the bristles going this way on this half of that tree and this way on this half and then the in the middle kind of going up. Remember, it's going to be more of a line in the middle. So no, not not so much of the branches showing in the middle. And then let's go ahead and do some off the side of the tree too. Like so some of the tree branches are hanging out. out out of the edges. Right. Okay. The other thing you could do is add like a little garland around the you know, or lights around it. Um, I thought about that. Like you could do a little string of lights around the tree or, um, let me see what time it would, now we're gonna have to quit. But you could do all kinds of, like maybe a little wreath on the door, you know, whatever. Whatever strikes your fancy. You get a little bit of black and Give that wheel hub a little bit more of a depth there. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's go ahead and throw some snow on there. I'm sure there's something, I, oh, I didn't put the handle highlight on. Let me do that. I'm sure there's other things like that that I missed, but if you, if you see them, you can fix them on yours. <laughs> too late for me so don't bother leaving me a comment about it <laughs> well you left out that sign oh sorry <laughs> I can't go back in time uh, I get comments like that sometimes I'm like I don't know what you want me to do about it right now it's really nothing I can do I'm sorry
sorry. <laughs> it reminds me of the video where the guy's stirring the popcorn and stir the middle. <laughs> like, I'm sure somebody's watching going, paint the whatever. <laughs> just, just paint the whatever. <laughs> paint the feet. I do that with birds all the time. Leave the feet off until the very last second. All right, I've got some white hair. It's actually got a little bit of blue in it, but I don't care because that's what we did with our the rest of ours, so it'll fit right in. Um, I'm trying to get it wet enough, though, because it has to be kind of see-through on the palette. It has to be like a milk consistency. So I'm blending it in with my glaze here, which is fine. That's not going to do anything, and then it'll actually help it stick a little bit better. Um, since we're thinning it out so much. So um, just scoop up a little bit on your fan brush or you can get a toothbrush too. And then if I tap it just a little bit, it should kind of come off. If I So if they're real big like that, that tells me that it's still a little bit too thick. So I'm going to add a little bit more water. That's going to be a little bit better. Tap it once on the paper towel and then... I should be able to, yeah, see how much easier and how much smaller those are. So let's go ahead and get a little bit of that. Tap away. Go ahead and really tap a lot at the very top. So that's where the snow is going to be coming down most. And then down toward the bottom, you can kind of go a little bit lighter with it. And then if you want to, you can take a Q-tip and take some of that color and do a few bigger ones. And these will be a little bit more like muted color, you know, like a little bit larger, like the ones that will show up on a, on a photo for the camera, you know, because it's close to you. The, the snowflakes that are a little closer to the lens will make the, will be a little bit bigger like this, but they'll be sort of transparent. So make sure you're using a Q-tip or something that is changing the transparency a little bit, making them a little bit softer. There we go. All right. Got our red truck. And, you know, I've added a lot of snow. I probably should have taken a picture of it before I <laughs> did that so I could have it before snow. But, anyhow, get the idea. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a great... Oh, you got... Okay. Yeah, we got stuff to do over here. All right, hurry. Um, you, only got, you only got th <laughs> seven minutes. <laughs> wow. gonna be my I'm going to sign huh? it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's totally so, not my fault. <laughs> we had a super chat tonight from Carol. Oh, thank you, Carol. It says, prayers go up, blessings come down. Aww. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Thank you. Thank you. Very sweet. Oh, yeah, that is awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Um, and then we had three questions. <clears throat> and so the first question was, uh, can you use matte medium to slow the drying time of acrylic paint? Yes. Okay. And then they followed up, says that they're having trouble with blending and the acrylic paint not going far enough. Acrylic paint not going right. far so enough. Right, so I think they're just saying that. Um, well, know, my question would be what kind of paint you're using because that really does make a difference. If you're using a very cheap acrylic paint, it will, um, it will take more coats. So... Okay. Um, Oops, nope, that wasn't good. That's just blending. It was blurring now. I didn't like my one of the letters, and now I'm just making a mess of this. Well, you'll. I'm just gonna erase the whole thing and sign it over on that side. <laughs> <laughs> if at first it doesn't work, I got a little bit of a hiccup. But what was the question again? <laughs> Uh, blending and paint going far enough. Yeah, the, so the matte medium can help with blending, um, just like the 
you saw me use it here or you know you saw me use the glazing medium here it'd be the same thing it just it just makes it a little bit more fluid so uh, it does have an extender in it but it's I don't think the extender is going to give you that much of an edge and um, a lot of it has to do with just how wet your paints are and um, if you're don't don't paint it with a fan or any kind of breeze so if you don't open your windows don't have a fan on in your room have a humidifier going if it's really dry in your area and um, you can use a stay wet pellet make sure you're spraying your paints a lot with water as you work and make sure you're always adding water to your paints if you're using like a heavy body acrylic you always need to add water because they're way too thick to use just straight out of the tube um, those kind of things will help um, and then if you want if you're having trouble blending a lot of times um, it just has to do with the thickness of the paint um, so if you use a little bit more um, a little bit more paint when you're trying to blend that might help um, you may be using too much paint if you're if you're using too much paint it can have the exact same problem you can have so much paint down that it's just smearing the paint around and you're just basically blending uh, mixing your colors instead of blending them one into another I have a video um, um, uh, that I just did. Uh, well, actually, I have a really short video on TikTok that you can just go and look that up if you want. Um, I think it's it's one of the tagged ones, but it shows really easy um, kind of way to blend. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I have lots of videos about blending. If that's you know, uh, a lot of the videos that I do are are about blending. So um, some of the large flower series, um, like the poppy or the recent uh, cosmos, um, will probably have a really good um, good tips on blending as well. So if you want to watch some of those, that might help. Okay. Okay. And then one last question. Uh, how do you know what colors to use for the under layers? Um, it kind of depends on what I want it to look like. So um, if I want to have a more soothing look uh, or a more muted look, I could use like a brown or a yellow oxide, like a burnt umber or a yellow oxide or something more um, warm. Um, or more neutral, I, I guess is the word. Um, if I want my paint to have some vibrancy like I did tonight, you know, because using these cooler colors like these blues and purples in the background can make your painting look a little bit cold. So I wanted a little bit of warmth to the red truck, so I added that orange underneath. So using a warmer color can help with that. Um, and also then sometimes I will just use a color that's most predominant in my painting. So if I'm painting a, like a pink flower, sometimes I'll start with the pink background um, that will help, you know, sh shorten my time. Um, and I'm not as worried about like the underlayer showing because um, I'm kind of just using that underlayer as part of my painting. Um, on a landscape, I tend to like to use warmer colors. So uh, like that's the orange uh, magenta or like uh, quinacridone magenta, oh, cadmium uh, orange with some white or burnt orange, quin quinacridone burnt orange with white or yellow oxide. Um, those would be kind of my picks for any like landscape backgrounds usually. Um, those like will brighten up the tone of the whole painting and give it a lot like a more of a glow. Um, so yeah, uh, that's that's kind of what I usually go with. It's it's complicated. There's no like right way of doing it. Um, a lot of times the masters would use like a yellow oxide base. Um, so you know that's a really popular choice, and it goes just with about anything. So if you're like at a loss and you don't know what to do, use like a burnt uh, a light burnt umber or a a yellow oxide um, goes with just about anything. So, is that good? That's good for That me. was it. All right. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Please comment, um, like, subscribe if you haven't already. I didn't even say that already, but subscribe, please, please. And, um, yeah, when you leave a comment, it really does help our channel. So I hope you do that. Um, I hope you give it a thumbs up. And um, it helps let YouTube know that we're doing a good job and that we should suggest they should, should suggest us to other people that like to watch painting videos too. 
So anyhow, thank you guys so much. Thanks to our regular followers who watch and all our patrons um, who follow along and support us every month. We appreciate you so much. Have a happy and Thanksgiving. No video Thursday. No video. Uh, no video this Thursday. Yes, for our, our patrons because it's Thanksgiving. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.